Hey again, it's Joe, the CRM chap here, and we're back with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the developer's exam for those who are looking to validate their skills building out integrations or bespoke functionality on top of the Power Platform. So in today's video, which is actually the final one in the series, um, because we got to the end of all the topics, uh, it's all about uh, alternate keys. So this is a concept within Microsoft Dataverse that we can use to um, sort of provide an alternative mechanism for ident uniquely identifying each of the row data that we uh, put into the system. So as we've seen already, when we, uh, by default, each table will have a unique identifier key, a primary key as part of that. Um, so we can best think as our alternate keys as being additional sort of, um, more from SQL Server standpoint, maybe unique um, uh, keys that we can also add on additionally to our table. And these will, this will typically be useful if, let's say, we've got an external system that we're integrating alongside Dataverse. Uh, and, you know, we've got, we wanted to store the primary key from that system in Dataverse. We can use alternate keys to um, not only uh, provide a clear indication of that, but also to enforce uniqueness. And the good thing as well is that we can actually query data um, in the data first based off the alternate key as we'll see in the latter portions of the demo. So let's let's show you first of all how you can actually get started and actually enable alternate keys on your tables. So I'm good I'm in the maker portal as we can see. I'm gonna go down to solutions, I'm gonna go into my demo solution like so. I'm gonna go into the account table. Then we can see at the top right up here we've got an option for keys like so. Um, so at the moment we've got no alternate keys defined. Um, so we can just set one up. We can have as many as up to 10 alternate keys per table at the moment. Uh, so I'm just going to call this my account uh, number key, like so. Uh, we can have multiple different keys defined, but just keep in mind that um, there are some platform constraints, i.e. some SQL Server constraints, around the sort of the unique um, constraint that will be created on this. So if you do start adding in too many columns, then potentially um, uh, the, in, the alternate key just won't create successfully. In this case, we're just going to use the account number as, as an example for our alternate key. I'm going to hit on the done icon. I'm going to save the table. And at this stage, what it's doing is defining the alternate key within our um, particular environment. Uh, but it actually won't have fully created yet behind the scenes. Uh, there's actually a system job that needs to kick off and actually go through and uh, sort of just make sure, first of all, that um, there, um, there aren't any duplicate values in there and to actually go off and just create the index. Um, so I'm just at the moment jumping out into the classic interface because we can actually use that as a mechanism to um, to sort of um, keep an eye on it. So we just give it a second to load. Okay, and then from there I can just go into my uh, table, so the account, and I can see I've got keys down here. Okay, in this case, we can actually see that the system job is actually running successfully because I can see the status on that is active. There's no system job on there. If there were any issues creating the alternate key, then we may need to go in and sort of just view the system job. Uh, typical courses will be, like I say, maybe you've got a duplicate value in there or maybe the length of the key uh, potentially exceeds um, any sort of platform limits. So if an alternate key created then, what that has sort of done, as I mentioned earlier, is also added a unique constraint onto that. So if we were to go jump into the model-driven app into our list of accounts, if I was to, example, maybe just try and create a new um, account with an account number of ADC, because it's already existing. When I try and save this record, I should get an error. Yeah, so, and, and we're, we're told effectively what the reason is. It's because we've already got a record in there with the same account number, okay? Um, so um, so this, this provides a nice way of being able to make sure that we can enforce uniqueness as well you know maybe so if not necessarily going off and integrating with an external system then we can have additional columns that are set up and you know we can sort of uh, protect and ensure that no duplicates apply against that the other nice thing as well is that um, we can actually query data based on the alternate key um, information points on here so instead of actually going off and using um, a sort of you know uh, having to know what the id is we can instead just refer to the alternate key value so at this point, I'm going to jump into Postman. Um, we're going to pick up from uh, one of the early videos. I'm just going to close this one down, um, um, where we sort of set up and test out the Web API. I'll link below to the video that showed us how we can get this environment set up in case you wanted to follow this along yourself. And what I want to do first of all is just create a brand new request. Uh, and we'll just sort of call this our alternate key demo. 
So if you recall from the uh, from the get data example up here, uh, if we were to do uh, if we were to query data from the dataverse, we typically maybe do something like this where we've got the ID selected. Um, so this is where we would return just a single record. So if we were to fire this off now, we should be able to see that. Uh, well, as long as the account actually exists, we should get a, a record back that confirms that. Um, what we can do instead, if I was to go back onto here, I'm just going to copy and paste in the value from there. Instead of within these brackets on here providing the ID, what we can do instead is actually just um, actually type in the name of the uh, of the alternate key value that we're wanting to retrieve. So in this case, if we've got um, one alternate key on our particular um, uh, you know, sorry, an alternate key with a single attribute in our environment like we have, so in this case our account number, we could do something like this where we type in uh, account number and then the name of the account number like so. Um, so in this case it's going to be let's say our ADC and we need to make sure those are in single quotes. Fire off that get request now and you can see that uh, we return just a single record only, so we're doing a single retrieve operation on here and it returns the full details of our, that particular record, adventure work cycle. If I was to maybe just make, make a change again, maybe if we were to do uh, ADVE instead, again, we should verify that um, we get a completely different account record through and the full details for it. So, you know, the having to work, remember and work with the GUID a lot could be, um, could be a potential challenge if you don't know it. Um, particularly if, let's say, you're going into the Dataverse system for the first time from your external system. So therefore, you know, the alternate keys and maybe specifying any um, um, any any that are relevant in Dataverse, you know, so if you've got, let's say, an external SAP system or maybe a Salesforce system or something like that, storing that value in Dataverse means that you can do some nice things like this and, again, not have to worry about knowing what the full primary key is when you're just interested in a single record or row from Dataverse, I should say. So definitely do check out alternate keys. Um, that you need to be aware of them for the exam, but I think they also do have some wider benefit as well if you were to use them. And with that, then we come to the end of the video and indeed the series itself. Um, so thank you for if you've been following along since the start. Uh, thank you. Um, I hope you found this content useful, and I hope you've um, um, you know as a revision tool for the exam or just in general just to learn about the Power Platform please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, there will be more videos in the future, I can guarantee. Um, and it'd be great to have you along for, for that journey as well. So all it leads me to say is have a great day. Cheers.